During my years with Elon, I became familiar with a distinct and deeply tribal mentality known as engineers. <laughs> and once, when my dad came to visit, I was taking him to see Elon at Elon's first company, at Zip2. And we were crossing through the office park, and we saw these lanky dudes in jeans and T-shirts, and they were racing these remote-controlled contraptions around the parking lot and banging them into cars. And my dad said to me, "Oh, are these the children of the engineers?" And I said, "No, Dad, these are the engineers." <laughs> and when Elon and I would travel, and we had to fill out those、um, forms at customs that wanted to know your occupation, you know, Elon never wrote down CEO or King of the world, or studly international playboy. <laughs> he wrote engineer, and he wore jeans and t-shirts to work. And whenever we went shopping for clothes, or later consulted with the stylist whose name was Martin, he would say, "No, no, you don't understand. I can't look cool or hip because I have to look like an engineer." <laughs> and one of the things that he told me. Although I don't know if it's as true now as it was back then, was that engineers could not quite figure out why it was that the suits made the big money when it was the engineers who actually built the stuff that they were selling. And meanwhile, the suits would listen to the engineers talk, and they would have no idea what they were saying. And that's when I realized that Elon was somebody who had learned to speak both languages. And he could move between the tribes because he was an engineer in a suit, and he brought together worlds. And this is what an engineer does. I mean, this is what a visionary does. They not only create something new, but they become the living embodiment of it. They don't just tell us a new story; they are that story. And soon, they don't even have to open up their mouths; they just walk into the room. I recently read a profile on Elon, and he's quoted as saying something to a friend. And this happened during the、uh, time we were still married together. And he said something to this friend that he never said to me. And he was saying that he was prepared to sacrifice everything, his entire fortune, to get a rocket into orbit. And he said, "I don't care if Justine and the kids and I end up living in Justine's parents' basement. I'm going to make this happen." And so I read this, and I kind of wanted to go back in time and. Go up to him and take him by the shoulders and look him very seriously in the eyes and say, "Have you seen my parents' basement?" <laughs> so I'd like to wrap up by、um, getting to Elon's advice, which is to always go beyond memorizing formulas, passing tests, to always go deep into the underlying principles of a subject, to track any problem down to the root cause buried in the dirt in the dark. And I would add to that and say, be brave enough, be bold enough, and be insane enough to see things more completely, more vividly, more fully than everybody else around you. And refuse to look away from what you see and what you know, even if people want to burn you at the stake. Because visionaries, they take all that passion and their badass personalities, and their mad skills, and the mastery of their chosen subject matter. And they use it to put themselves on the line, unlike anybody else you'll ever meet. And it's this that allows them to open up windows into another, deeper reality in which transformation is possible and things of awe happen on a regular basis. Because in the beginning, we don't trust them because we think they're crazy, but by the end, we trust them because we know they're crazy. They're crazy enough to accomplish anything. And risk it all in order to bring us something new to believe in. They might make <laughs> lousy husbands and terrible wives. They might be the friend who never sends you a birthday present and forgets to show up for coffee. But they bring light to the dark, and they show us the universe. Keep the channel open. Thank you. <laughs>